Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ad Astra. So the last place we left off, we had actually <laughs> tied, tied, we had actually tied Amicus up, and we are well not quite piloting the ship, but really right now we're the ones in charge. So you know, at least he uh, he helped us avoid running the ship into a nearby star. So you know, baby steps. But anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. Let me detain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. All right. There we go. But why? Why did you do it in the first place? What do you want from me? Amicus looks at me for a long while, probably debating on how much to tell me. Then he turns away. I needed a pet. Excuse me? Amicus shrinks up even more in his chair. It's a very long story. I glare at the back of his head. Well, if we're going to be here for a while, then I have time. Amicus goes on staring out the window. My father was the emperor. The throne was mine to take. My brother has challenged me, so now we're both competing for it. Amicus looks at me out of the corner of his eye for my reaction. His expression tells me I should be impressed, but learning he might be an influential figure among his people doesn't really seem too crazy after the events of the past day or so. And getting a pet will help you how? My brother has one, a sibling species, which means that his pet is on the same level of the hierarchy as us. I frown. Oh, and that's unusual? Definitely. It shouldn't even be legal, but somehow he negotiated it. They signed a contract and everything. I shake my head. So what does having a pet do? Amka shrugs. It's a good status symbol to have. The fact that my brother was able to obtain such a prestigious pet shows his skill at negotiation and has put me at a huge disadvantage. I needed to do something even more grand to impress my father's advisor. He's the one that will choose between us. By kidnapping me? Amicus growls. That wasn't part of the plan. I thought you'd know what I was and... I thought you know what I was and be amazed that a wolf had come back to your species. I was going to make a deal with you, like my brother did with his pet. I wanted a sapient that no one had seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. So that's why I'm here. To be used as some pawn in some power struggle in some alien empire far away. So why can't you take me back? What if I promise not to say anything? I, I would take you back if I could. I realize now that that would have been the better option, but I can't. Why not? First of all, the ship might be damaged beyond repair. Secondly, there isn't enough power to get back. Earth was on the outer reaches of how far I could travel. I need the rest to return home. I managed to stop myself from telling the wolf that all of this is his fault and shouldn't be my problem at all. Well, can we get more power when we get to your home, then go back to Earth? No. It's it's a type of power that the parents produce. We're not able to harness it. Yet. So, get more from them. From, when, from wherever you got the power in the first place. Amicus leans his head against the headrest. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Our parents, our parents authorizes and distributes it, and for whatever reason, they stopped supplying it when we lost our emperor. I feel myself growing more and more frustrated. Then how the hell are you using it now? A moment of silence goes by. This was my father's ship. Only the emperor has constant access to the technology. I borrowed it to get to you. I glare at him. You mean stole it? You know, you're pretty dishonest for someone who says they never lie. Another soft, grumbling growl from him. God, I got something in my eye. Get out of my eye. Times are desperate. Ask your dad to take me back, then. If you didn't gather from earlier, he's dead. So no one has access to it right now. I'm just using up what was left. I stare at Amicus for a while, words failing me. Listen, I didn't want to do all those things I did to you. I'm protecting us both. I'd laugh. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. I was planning to bring you to the palace to live a good life and forget your old one. Then when you started asking these qu those questions, I realized your intelligence is much higher than I thought it would be. Then Khan thought you might attack me. I made mistakes. Amicus, Amicus lets out another huge sigh and slumps in the seat, looking away. Several minutes go by in silence, both of us staring out into the eerie blue. So what now? What are your plans? Amicus is the one to laugh this time. <laughs> Get out of these bonds if you'd let me. I look at him incredulously. Amicus sighs. Listen, you have no idea how to handle this ship. I can at least run diagnostics to see what we can do about this. What's to stop you from knocking me out again? If you don't attack me or hit me with the Nervo again, Nervo, <laughs> then I won't have to. I look to my left armrest and pick up the little taser device. 
This? Amicus eyes it uneasily. Yeah. How can I trust you after everything that's happened? I give you my word. I frown. And you could go back on it just as easily. I would never do that. I don't make promises lightly, Killian. Amicus is so indignant that I actually believe him. Or he's just a really good actor. Either way, I'm going to have to let him go at some point, especially if we really can't get back to Earth. I make my decision. If I let you go, you have to find a way to get me back to Earth. Amicus thinks for a moment. I can do that if I become Emperor. And how long will that take? Amicus shrugs. A few months if all goes well. With your help, it could be even faster. You're very clever. More intelligent than some wolves I know, even. Months? My parents are probably freaking out by now. School starts in a few weeks. All these things seem so distant now. Amicus frowns. I'm sorry, but I can't do anything. I need to be an emperor to even talk to the parents. I think, but again, I don't have many options. I look Amicus in the eye. Y you promise? You have my word. For a moment, I sit there, contemplating. Then I sit up straight. All right, stand up. Amicus perks up, then hops to his bound feet, almost falling over. I'm sure to place the Nervo close by, close by behind me, just in case. A few minutes later, and the wolf is free. We both regard each other warily for a few minutes before Amicus finally sighs. Listen, I have no reason to incapacitate you now that you know everything. But if it makes you feel better, you can hang on to the Nervo until we get to Ad Astra. At a fair exchange? I look back at the little device. Well, I have little reason to trust Amicus. The wolf has virtually no reason to trust me. I consider it, then shake my head. Can we put it away somewhere? I'd rather not. I'd rather just not be thinking about it. Amicus looks at me in surprise, then rubs his stomach where I jabbed him. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a deal to me. Amicus holds out a paw, and I look down at the thick black pads on his fingers and palm before picking up the Nervo and handing it to him carefully. For a moment, I imagine him immediately turning the thing around and jabbing it into my face, but instead he turns and walks toward the back of the ship. I notice his stance is slightly bow-legged, and he adjusts himself a few times. That makes me feel a little guilty after fighting about fighting dirty earlier, but only a little. On his way, he sweeps up his cape in one fluid motion before wrapping it around his shoulders. Then he moves back to the what? Then he moves to the back wall, sticking out a paw. He presses a panel, and a small portion of the wall slides back, revealing another smaller room. From where I am, I can see what looks like a little cot in various cupboards. He opens one of these these and places the nervo the nervo inside it before shutting it. He comes back out and notices me staring. That's my quarters where I sleep. If you uh, need to urinate or whatever, what else you do, there's a toilet in there. I'm fine for now. I feel my stomach gurgle, something that it's been doing for a while now. I'm a little hungry, though. Amicus raises a brow. You want to try it again? It, sure. Yeesh. It's not the worst food I've ever had. The earthy smell translates into the taste, but there's a strange hint of sweetness to it, like chocolate, and that makes it a little more palatable. I can at least swallow it down without gagging, so that's good, I guess. Amicus has his own cup, though he's paying more attention to the panels than to his food. I may have been exaggerating a bit earlier. Damage appears to be minimal. Minimal. <laughs> minimal. We're, all right. We're actually lucky that you didn't lock onto something worse like a pit. There was one very near that star. A... a pit? Amicus shrugs, waving his hand in the air, as if brushing my question aside. In a black hole? That's what I'm thinking, a black hole. A very strong gravitational singularity that sucks up everything around it. Like a black hole? Black hole? Like, it's a gravity, its gravity is so powerful that even light gets pulled into it. That's why they're black. Amicus looks at me in surprise. Oh, you know what that is. Guess I should stop being surprised, honestly. You humans really are something. You basically uplifted yourselves. I shrug. We touched on it in my Astronomy 101 class. I don't know much about them. But the fact that your species found out about them in the first place. Anyway... Amicus presses a button before suddenly the hum of the ship comes back to life. Systems back online. And... Amicus pulls the lever and suddenly the blue disappears and the windows are filled with warping stars again. I immediately look away, feeling the chocolate mud start to work its way up my throat. We were actually almost at an Astra when you... took control. Amicus rubs the side of his neck, wincing as he stretches it out. Should be there fairly soon. What is this? I wave my hand at the window, not looking. The bending light? It's the stretch drive. Basically, space is being short shortened ahead of us. Amicus puts his paws close together in front of himself and stretched out behind us. Amicus stretches his paws out wide. I, uh, don't really know how it works. Only the parents can build this kind of tech, and it's the only way I could get to Earth. 
or anywhere outside our star system, really. They even figured out a way to make time stand still around us when we travel. Otherwise, way too much time would have passed back home. I'm starting to get a picture of how powerful these parents actually are, beings capable of warping space and time to their will. So, how much more time? Arriving at Stella Vita. Vita. It's arriving at Stella Vita. And just like that, the stars become still again. Amicus grins. Welcome to the Astra, Killian. I look out the window and see a large green and blue sphere shimmer below me. Beyond it, there's another globe, this one chalky and gray. A smaller and even brighter orb floats further to the right, its color almost pure white. Amicus points at the more Earth-like sphere. That specifically is at Astra. The planet to the left is an orc is Ancorus. There aren't many people there aside from miners. The smallest is Torque, another moon. I know you live on a planet, so at Astra might eat might seem a bit small to you. I press a hand to the window and notice that it's ice cold. Looks pretty big from here. Amicus leans over the console and starts touching at the screen. Re-entry sequence engaged. Go ahead and put your safety straps on. Re-entry is never is never comfortable in smaller ships. I hurriedly do as he says, sitting down and trying to figure out the seatbelt. Eventually, Amicus has to come over and help, showing me how the strap just feeds into a slot. This automatically pulls the straps tightly across my waist and chest. As Amicus gets to his, gets in his own seat, we start to curve around to the darker side of Ad Astra. Ooh. Every now and then, there's a bit of a downward tug on my stomach, sort of like when the passenger jet I was in was landing in Rome. I had imagined that things would rattle around, along with a bunch of fire and heat like in a Hollywood movie. Instead, there's only a rumbling, a rumbling sound that accompanies a gentle vibration through the seat. There isn't any fire, but I do start to see blue flashes on the otherwise black windows. I look over at Amicus and see that he's got his eyes closed, looking relaxed. Um... The wolf opens his eyes and smiles, smiles gently at me. Don't worry, this is all normal. I realize how nervous I must look, so I nod and lean my head back in the seat. The electric blue flashes stop after a while, and then I feel one final downward pull on my body before the rumbling fades out. We sit in complete silence and darkness for a moment for a moment before I hear Amicus moving next to me. Okay, we're in the hangar right now. Just follow me into the play, into the palace. Amicus gets up, but the ship stays dark. So does the hangar. Okay, why aren't there any lights? Uh, everyone's probably asleep. I don't want to wake them up. I get the feeling that he just doesn't want anyone to catch us, but I don't say anything. I fiddle with my seatbelt, unable to get it undone until I feel Amicus lean over me, breathing in my ear as this large paw covers mine, pressing something that releases the strap. <clears throat> oh, Lord. Sorry about that. Scratchy throat. I stand up, feeling around blindly as I hold onto the seat, only barely able to make out the red bristles of the headrest in front of me. I reach out a hand. Hey! Amicus's rough paw pads envelop my hand. What's wrong? I can't see anything. Oh, can you not see in low light? Amicus starts pulling me along before I hear a soft beep, then a swooshing sound, then a whooshing sound. Not really. Another sound catches my attention. Crickets. They have crickets here too? At the same time, I'm hit by a wall of humid warmth, almost like walking into a sauna. Amicus puts a paw against my chest. Wait a second. Then I hear a soft thud followed by a grunt. H hello Lean down. My eyes have adjusted a bit more to the dark, and I'm barely able to make out what I think are paws reaching up towards me. I crouch down, and Amicus grabs me under the, ar under, under the arms before pulling me clumsily off the deck of the ship. My face mashes up against his furry chest before I'm set down on my own feet. All right. So we're just going to go straight to my room. Try not to make too much noise. I start to nod, but Amicus is already pulling me along. The humidity presses down on me like a physical force, and I start to worry that I might actually have trouble surviving on this moon. It's really hot. Things will cool off once we're inside. I can hear him panting heavily as we move through the hangar. I still can't see much, just angular shapes in the darkness, but finally I see some light ahead along with some cold air. We turn a corner and I have a and I have a and I have to blink how I have to blink against how bright it suddenly becomes. Oh shit. Ooh. I look around at the pillars and marble floor, the bright lights above me and what looks like a garden complete with statues extending out through the archways. Well, at least I know Amicus wasn't lying about living in a palace. What do you think? Wow, I mean, it looks really cool, really expensive. I don't know if that last part was such a great compliment, but Amicus seems happy. Thanks, it's going to be your home for a while, so I'm glad you like it. Amicus adjusts his cape, fanning it out a little. This is only a small portion of the palace, of course. I'll show you... Excuse me. I'll show you around later, but for now, I want to go to my room and dry out a little. I must look like a mess right now. The humidity doesn't do my fur any favors. 
I can tell Amicus is genuinely embarrassed, even if he's trying to joke. So I put a hand up. So I put a hand up to my hair. I have a little less to worry about, but I'm sure my hair is pretty crazy right now. True, that patch of fur really is something, though. The wolf reaches out and touches my hair, rubbing it between the pads on his fingers. We've made physical contact several times over the last day, but this is the first time that it really feels friendly. We stand there for a moment, just long enough for things to get awkward. Amicus pulls his hand back suddenly, as if realizing what he's doing. Oh, uh... He's safe from having to think of something to say as we both hear footsteps coming up to the hall to our right. Shit! What? Hide and be quiet! Amicus whispers loudly at me and suddenly pushes me hard back to the way, back to the way we came. I stumble before scrambling around the corner. The footsteps get louder as I stand up and press my back against the wall, listening. Amicus! I jump, the person almost shouting Amicus' name. Cassius? Amicus' deeper voice responds, sounding cool and collected. Where the hell have you been? His voice is higher pitched and a little more articulate than Amicus's. I start to look around the corner, then hesitate. Then I do it anyway, grunting to see who this person is. Luckily, Amicus has moved further down the room, so that I'm slightly behind this Cassius guy. Oh lord, okay. I see a white wolf. Quite a bit smaller compared to Amicus, but no less intimidating, maybe even more so. I can tell by his demeanor that he's probably not a fun person to be around. I was out hunting. Something wrong? Hunting? For two days? Is that a joke? <laughs> I like this tribal music. Was it that long? Yes! You were supposed to make a speech in Lux yesterday. How many times did we remind you of it? Cassius suddenly takes a deep breath. Really, Amicus, you seem to expect everyone to cover up your mistakes. I can't comprehend how you could have forgotten. I lost track of time. That's not an excuse. How do you expect to become Emperor if you act this way? Amicus growls. Don't even pretend, Cass. You're probably happy I missed it. That's ridiculous, Amicus. I only want what's best for the Empire. Amicus opens his mouth and shuts it suddenly. No, I'm not doing this tonight. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Cassius quietly regards Amicus for a moment and shakes his head. Well, Virginia went in your stead, so you have her to thank when she returns. She better, she's better at that sort of thing anyway. The point was to show Lux that the next possible Emperor stands in solidarity with them. Sending your sister is not a good look. Well, walking around in undergarments doesn't look good either. You think that's how an Emperor should behave? No one's awake, Amicus. Don't be such a pup. I'm saying you look really small without your armor. Now that is not a good look for an Emperor. Excuse me? What? I only want what's best for the Empire, and a little runt like you definitely isn't. They stare at each other for a long time, and though I have no idea what's going on, I can almost see the electricity arcing between them. Finally, Cassius turns on his heel and stalks away, tail swishing furiously. Good night, Amicus. Amicus stands there for a moment, still puffed out a little before he finally deflates. Damn it! I stand quietly around the corner, waiting for Amicus to call me back. When he doesn't, I whisper at him. Amicus? His ears prick up, and he turns He turns to me. Hey, come on. We should go before anyone else decides to show up. Uh, okay. I can tell by the way the wolf walks, his ears slightly down, his tail almost dragging, that he's not in a good mood. You all right? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. My brother just knows how to irritate me, and I shouldn't have said that to him. We quietly walk through the marble halls, the echoing of our footsteps the only sound. Is he not supposed to see me? It's just... I just need to think of the right way to introduce you. Now isn't the best time. Is he the one that challenged you for the throne? Amicus is quiet for a moment before heaving a huge sigh. Yes. He's really starting to turn my life upside down because of it. Sometimes I think he just sees this all as a game. We come to a stop at what looks like a door. It's completely smooth, though, made of what, of what also looks like marble. Amicus doesn't make any move to open it. And you know, he never seemed concerned for me and my duties until after he made his challenge. That's what bothers me the most, knowing that it's all an act. I guess you're not really close with him, then. Not since we were pups. No. A disturbing thought suddenly hits me. Well, you know in Earth's ancient Rome, the, pla the place where you guys uplifted, people would kill each other over the throne alike. A lot. Does that happen here? Amicus frowns. Uh, I suppose it's happened in the past, but that was a long time ago. Besides, Cassius would never do something like that. Amicus sticks out his paw and presses it black on the square on the wall. Presses it on the black square on the wall? Okay. The door slides open without a sound. Ooh, that is a nice room. 
I feel a rush of cool air come out of the room, and Amicus lets out a happy sigh as he steps inside. Ah, that's much better. My dad's advisor keeps the climate way too hot in the rest of the palace. I follow the wolf inside and look around. Aside from a few quirks, the room looks like it could have become it could have come straight out of a lu any luxury hotel on Earth. Amicus sits heavily on the bed, making it squeak. He starts to strip off his clothing. Oh, nice. Toilet and bath are in there. He nods ahead at the door across from the bed. Then he jabs a thumb back at the large curtain. That's the balcony if you want to get some air, though I don't know why you would in this weather. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Hey, we got to meet his brother Cassius, and they don't like each other very much. Well, they are competing for the throne, so... Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!